Hello there, welcome to Papa Nick's Music. I'm your host, Papa Nick Lewis, and on this delightfully sunny day, we are going to talk about the police. Um, I first became aware of the police when Roxanne was released as a single. This was 1978, early 1978, uh, April, May, June, somewhere in there. Um, and I really liked Roxanne when I first heard it. I thought, okay, this is this is cool. This is this is uh, uh, fresh. It, Roxanne didn't sound like anything else that was uh, playing on the radio at the time. I mean, it definitely stood out. And it stood out in a good way, I thought. Um, I was impressed with uh, the, 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 the sound of the song. I mean, the song itself is okay. I've got, I like it. I think it's well written. It's, it, it's everything a pop song should be. Uh, but the sound of it was different. Um, the sound of the instrumentation was different. Uh, the sound of Sting's voice was different. Everything about it was different. It was it was just like a, a breath of fresh air on the radio when it came on. Um, and so, I as soon as I heard the song, I thought, oh, okay, I got I got I got to get this album. So I tracked down that the, their first album, and and I loved it. I, I thought the 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 album was great, and have been a staunch fan of the Police ever since. Uh, and so when I was starting to think about doing these album ranking videos, okay, please, I, I, I'm going to do a, 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 video about the, a, a video about police albums. One of the things that is um, interesting from my perspective is that they actually had a very narrow <laughs> span of time that they recorded in. I'm looking at my notes over here. Uh, Outlandos de Moor, their first album came out in 1978. Their last album, Synchronicity, came out in 1983. Five albums. I mean, they were essentially releasing an album a year until uh, the gap between fourth and fifth album. There's two years there instead of the regular one year. But in that span of time, they went from mildly popular to, you know, like most popular band in the world, and that's when they stopped. I mean, they, they quit when they were on top, which... Again, interesting, uh, but really from my perspective of somebody who does, you know, album ranking videos, is that this means that they were focused, um, and because they left when they were on top, because I think they knew that they were going out while they were on top, um, there aren't really any bottoms. I mean, the, we've got in this span of time five albums that they released. And all five of them are really strong albums, really good albums. So I strongly recommend The Police. Uh, I don't think they released a bad album, which is going to make my job here a little bit easier. Um, I also would say pretty much the same thing about each of their albums. So <laughs> that also makes my job a little bit easier. Um, before we get into the ranking system itself, or the, the album ranking itself, let's talk about uh, a couple of things. The first off, we got the subjectivity notice. All artistic appreciation is subjective. The, 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 the very act of labeling a piece of art as good or bad is entirely subjective. There is no such thing as an objectively good or objectively bad piece of art. It is all based on the perceptions of the viewer of the artwork. Um, there will be times when I will say that I really like something and it's entirely possible that you will not like it. And there will be things that you really like that I do not like, and that's okay. Um, talking about things that you like is fun. As long as we don't fool ourselves into believing that the things that we like are in and of themselves inherently good. No, it's good because I like it. It's not good because I don't like it, and that's as far as that goes. So if you want to disagree with something that I've said, Go ahead, drop a line in the comments, tell me that I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. Up until the point where you try to tell me that you think I am objectively wrong about the quality of one of these albums, uh, at which point I will happily tell you which rope you can go piss up. Uh, and by the same token, uh, don't, uh, uh, don't interpret anything I say as me saying you know, that I'm, I'm labeling this as objectively good or objectively bad. No such thing. Secondly, we need to talk about the ground rules. Uh, when we rank albums here at Papa Nick's Music, we focus on original studio recordings of a decent length that 
have as their prime purpose being a collection of songs for, uh, you know, that, that exist to be listened to in a, in a group. Um, and out of all of this, the only thing, again, the police's uh, window of recording was so narrow. That means we're not going to do the Greatest Hits album and we're not going to do the live albums they released after their reunion tour. You know, we're just limiting ourselves to the five um, studio albums recorded between uh, Outlandus D'Amour in 1978 and Synchronicity in 1983. Now, if you've watched one of my other videos, you know when it comes to ranking albums, um, I don't think in terms of super fine uh, levels of distinction. I think in terms of letter grades. Um, if I listen to an album and it's a normal, everyday, typical album, uh, I'm not going to recommend that you get it, but I'm not going to recommend that you stay away from it. It's just a good, competently produced album. You may or may not enjoy it. That's, that's a C. If I have a mild recommendation, either that you get it or that you stay away from it, that becomes either a B or a D, respectively. If I have a strong recommendation, either that you get it or that you stay away from it, that becomes an A or an F, respectively. Um, and when I'm looking at these five albums, they're all A's. I've, I've, three of them are A's, the other two are A pluses. So there are no bad albums here. So if by some weird quirk of fate, you happen to be watching this video because you're a fan of me as opposed to a fan of the police. I can't even begin to uh, imagine that that's true. But if that is true and you think, okay, I want to, I want to, I want to check these guys out, just pick a spot and dive in. Um, come right in, the water's good, right? Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter where you start. They're all strong albums. Now, with that said, here we go. Coming in at number five, um, a thing that strikes me as I listen to all five of these albums is that the first three sound very similar, um, and then the last two sound very similar. There's there's a change in the way they record between albums three and album or albums three and four. Um, the first three albums are all very tight, very crisp. Um, very uh, bare bones as far as instrumentation. Um, the last two albums, you've got a lot more synthesizers, a lot more um, complex uh, music going on. Um, and I think that change was slightly to the detriment. Coming in at number five is 1981's Ghost in the Machine, which is that fourth album where it changes. Um, up until this point, like I said, all of these albums sounded uh, tight and crisp and I mean, you could hear each individual instrument and they had really good tones on their instruments and all this sort of stuff. And then Ghost in the Machine comes out and it's all kind of fuzzy and synthesized, um, which I think makes the album suffer in comparison to the other uh, to the other four especially to the first three um, it's not a bad album don't get me wrong I'm, I'm not saying that it's a bad album there, there's some really good songs on here there are no skippers on this album I listen to the whole thing if I listen when I listen to it I should say and it's got some excellent songs uh, every little thing she does is magic is excellent uh, hungry for you is excellent um, uh, Andy Summers' song on here Omega Man excellent Stuart Copeland's song on here, Darkness, probably my favorite song on the album. Um, so there's a lot of good songs, a lot of strong songwriting on this album. It just has that kind of mushy, wall of sound, fuzzy sound to it that I'm uh, not particularly fond of. So, number five, Ghost in the Machine. Number four, um, if, I'm, if I'm shooting from the hip, uh, and if I am trying to anticipate what I think most people are going to, uh, how most police fans are going to rank these albums, I'm thinking this is going to be a very strong contender for best album of the five. Uh, it was certainly uh, hugely successful at the time. Um, I will be honest, I don't care enough to go back and double check all of the sales figures for <laughs> for all of these albums, but I would be really surprised if this is not their best-selling album. It was huge when it was released, and that was number four, 
Synchronicity from 1983. And I think a lot of fans would probably put Synchronicity up toward the top, uh, if not at the very top. And I understand why, because there is some really good music on this album. Um, they, the impression I have is that they tried something different when they recorded Ghost in the Machine. They got that synthesized, murky, fuzzy sound. They didn't care much for it, so they tried to take a step back and do it the way they had done the first three albums, but keeping the best um, uh, qualities in terms of recording process and you know, what kind of uh, 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 synthesizers they used and that kind of stuff. They tried to keep the best of Ghost in the Machine. Um, I th that's what it sounds like to me. I don't know how, how accurate that is. Um, and sonically, this is a very good album. Uh, I enjoy listening to it. I, I, I really like the, the, the bulk of the album. The problem that we have here is that, you know, I'm looking at my notes here, and I've got, you know, with Ghost in the Machine, there were no skippers. On Synchronicity, I got three. Um, there, are three album, there are three songs on this album that I will completely just skip right over. I do not want to hear these ever again. I've, 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 I've heard them, I've acknowledged their presence, and we're going to go on our, our separate ways. Um, and they are uh, Mother. As soon as I said, there are songs on here that I skip, I am willing to bet every police fan out there said, ooh, I bet Mother's one of them. <laughs> I actually like Andy Summers' songs for the most part, but this one, yeah, I, I can't quite get next to. Uh, but the other two songs are both Sting songs. Um, oh My God, and hands down, in a runaway winner for my least favorite police song on any album is Tea in the Sahara. Oh my God, do I hate that song. Um, it's the song, the lyric on that song goes out of its way to call attention to its lyrical properties. Specifically, it has such a tight rhyme scheme and the rhyming elements are so close to one another that it is distracting. It, it drives me up the wall every time I hear it. If I, if I heard it as an instrumental track, if we just took the, uh, the, the lyrics out, took the voices out, just played it as an instrumental track, it would be okay. It's not a great tune, but it's not a bad one. But as soon as you start putting those lyrics in, oh my God, it just screams, hey, Hey guys, I just got a rhyming dictionary. Oh man, I hate that song. Uh, and if I've got a song that I hate uh, on an album, even if I think the album is good, yeah, okay, that album's not going to go very high. Like I said, there are some good songs on here. Um, Synchronicity 1, Synchronicity 2 are both good. Every Breath You Take is good. Um, Miss Gradenko is good. Murder by Numbers, I love Murder by Numbers. Um, King of Pain, which is a, a horribly bleak song. But I like, you know, I'm, I'm okay with the occasional more bleak, bleak song. So there's a lot of good stuff on here. The good is really good and the bad is really bad. <laughs> and it, it, it ricochets back and forth between the two. So because it is so uneven, synchronicity is at number four. At number three, um, this is when most of my friends became aware of the police. I was aware of the police from Roxanne. As soon as I heard Roxanne on the radio that first time, like I said earlier, I was hooked. Um, but most of my friends, most of the people that I knew at the time became aware of the police in 1980 with the release of Zenyatta Mundana. Uh, specifically with the release of Don't Stand So Close to Me and Da Do 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 Da 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 Da. And Zenyatta Mandata is a pretty good album. <laughs> I mean, I've got it at number three, right? I mean, I'm, it's a good solid A. Um, there are some really good songs on here. Um, looking at my notes. Don't Stand So Close to Me. I love that song. Canary in a Coal Mine. I love that song. When the World is Running Down, You Make the Best of What's Still Around is a brilliant song. The Other Way of Stopping. Brilliant song. So there's, there's some really good stuff on here. Um, problem that we have is that same... I've got the same problem here that I had with synchronicity. Uh, when it's good, it's good, and when it's not, it's not. 
Um, there are skippers on here. Voices in my head. Uh, voices inside my head. Excuse me. I. Yeah. There's no need to listen to that thing more than once. Uh, behind my camel. I like Andy Summers, but. Hoy, that's that's not an earworm. That's a mosquito in your ear worm. Um, Shadows in the Rain is an okay song, but you know it shouldn't be five six minutes long. It should be like a minute and a half. Um, it's there. I listen to that song and I think, okay, somebody needs to stand up and uh, stand up to Sting and say, you know what? <laughs> Just because you like it <laughs> doesn't mean we should do it. Uh, there's some good stuff on here. It's wildly uneven. Okay. Those are my three A's. Now we're in A-plus territory. And the, the beautiful thing here is that as I'm looking at these last two albums, I have no negative comments I can make. They're both very good albums. They, are, they, they both are contenders for perfect album. Um, I am not saying that this is a two-way tie and on any given day I could go with one or the other. No. Um, I've, I've got a definite favorite of the two. Uh, but they are both really, really good. Very, very good. Uh, coming in at number two, we've got 1978's debut, Outlandos de More. Um, and like I was saying earlier, at the time that this thing came out, it was a breath of fresh air uh, compared to everything else that was, that was being released at the time. Uh, I loved the instrumentation. I loved the way it was recorded. I loved the sound of it. I loved the fact that you could distinctly hear uh, bass and drums and guitar and and the vocals and it was it was it was very very fresh sounding. Um, I will also be honest. One of the main reasons why I like the Police is that I am a huge fan of Stuart Copeland. Um, I am. I firmly believe that he is the best drummer of the pop rock era. Uh, I'm sorry, Rush fans. Uh, he is Steve, Stuart, Compl Stuart Copeland is—he's—he's—he's—he's he's, he's, he's my guy. When the Police had their reunion tour here, you know, several years ago, uh, they came through San Antonio, which is the international headquarters of uh, Pop and X Music, and I got a ticket to go see them. And I intentionally bought a restricted view. Um, seat on the back side of the stage because I was the I I wanted to hear the band and I wanted but I wanted to watch Stuart Copeland drum um, and it was a perfect vantage point I could, uh, the whole time I'm just I'm just watching this guy I just I'm a huge fan um, and the drums on Outlando Stimor were I said it earlier, breath of fresh air. I, 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 I struggle with how to express this, obviously. Um, but it didn't sound like anything else at the time. And I loved it. I, I, I still love that, that, that crack snare that he's got. and the, the, uh, I, I could listen to Stuart Copeland drumming all day long. Um, so, Outlander still more. Uh, it's, uh, it was... Very fresh at the time. Uh, there are no skippers on the album, and I can't think of anything wrong with it. Um, I also, though, can't really say. Well, I would single out this song and this song and this song. I mean, they're all they're all good, but none of them are really, you know, head and shoulders above the crowd. Um, which means we don't have much in the way of peaks and valleys. It's just, you know, consistent level. Whereas my number one album is Regatta de Blanc from 1979. Again, no skippers. Again, fresh sound. Again, love the, the, the tones. I love, you know, I liked Sting's voice. I love Stuart Copeland's drums. I like the sound of the, the, the different guitar tones that, that Andy Summer generates. Love this. But here we've also got uh, songs that I really, really like. <laughs> uh, the obvious favorites, uh, Message in a Bottle, Walking on the Moon. Um, but the thing about this album that really makes it stand out for me is that there is a shit ton of Stuart Copeland music on this album. Uh, there are six songs, either written or co-written, 
by Stuart Copeland on here. We've got three songs that he co-wrote. Regatta de Blanc and Death Wish were written by all three. Um, the like the jam songs. It's All Right For You, written by uh, Stuart Copeland and Sting. But there are also three songs that are Copeland specific uh, on Any Other Day, Contact, and Does Everyone Stare, that are, you know, these six, these, these are my favorite songs on the album. These are the songs that I keep gravitating towards. This is the strongest Stuart Copeland album, so it is my favorite of the five. So there you have it. We've got five really good albums. Grab one, listen to it, you'll love it. Um, if you like, uh, if you if you agree, if you disagree, if if you think I'm you know, barking at the moon, leave me a comment below. Let me know that I'm that I'm barking at the moon. I'll, I'll be happy to, to to bark at you a little bit. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the conversation, then please uh, give it a give it a like. That would be nice. Uh, if you are interested in watching similar things in the future, then go ahead and subscribe. Click the little notification bell because you know, come on, that's that's what you're supposed to do. You know this routine. Um, and I guess that's about it for today. Um, I hope the rest of your day is uneventful. See you soon.